Well, greetings and welcome to week 24. There's more to the story. We're on the book of Revelation and we're ending today this whole journey through the Bible, looking at God's upper story plan to redeem us, to buy us back, to get us back from our wandering ways. And Revelation is kind of the capstone of the Bible where it says, worthy is a lamb who was slain, who's Blood set us free to be people of God. So hang in there. Hang in there in the midst of everything that's going on in the world, in our lives, whatever it is. Hang in there. Now, one of the, uh, I talked a little bit about that in the sermon <clears throat> yesterday and in uh, the Sunday preview. What I want to talk with you about today is uh, the word to Ephesus. Uh, there are, there are seven churches of Revelation in chapters 2 and 3, and uh, I mentioned those on Friday. And the church at Ephesus, that was really uh, a church that Paul loved. He spent the most time there, three, three and a half years in Ephesus. Sin City on Steroids. Remember, we've talked about that before. We talked about the prayer for the Ephesian believers in, in Ephesians 1 and 3. And in chapter um, 2 of Revelation, he talks to the angel in the church of Ephesus, and it says, Right, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and found them false. You have persevered and endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Hang in there, he says. Yet this I hold against you. The angel says through Jesus, through John, to the church of Ephesus, you have forsaken the love you had at first. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practice of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. The Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Remember the Nicolaitans, we talked about them, who said that the body and spirit are separate things and whatever you do with the body, it don't matter, as they say in Wisconsin, just do what good is spiritual stuff. Paul, or John says, no, no, what you do with the body uh, uh, has an effect on the spirit of who you are. So don't do all that bad stuff. The temple of Artemis, remember we talked about that? the temple prostitutes. No, don't do that. Do the stuff that you did at first. Follow me. Remember your first love. So the intent of the book of Revelation is, is to put us on our knees before God, which is what I said on Sunday. Not to give us all the details about the end of time, but to remember that Revelation was written during a time of extreme persecution for those early Christians some Christians were beheaded, some were crucified on a cross like Jesus. Um, they were doused with oil and set afire or dressed up in animal skins and having dogs or other animals devour them. It was a horrible time. So John writes this revelation, the unveiling of Jesus Christ, to tell persecuted Christians that there will be justice in the end. All that bad stuff, it'll be taken care of. Just trust me, as I said on Sunday. Just be on your knees in prayer and remember that God's got the whole world in his hand. Chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation talk about those words to the seven churches and uh, the word to Ephesus. I love that. Ephesus was really, I think, it's the church that Paul loved the most. It was what he spent so long there. And remember, Ephesus was a rich cosmopolitan world where there were people from all over, thousands of people coming in on a regular 
basis. They had the temple of Artemis with all of the temple prostitutes. They had the um, Demation temple, the ruler of the place, where when you walked in, it was at the highest point. So everybody knew that Emperor Domitian was in charge of the city, but he wasn't. He wasn't. Paul says, John says, just hang in there and don't be distracted with all the stuff that's going on. John, Jesus says through John, I have this against you, that you have abandoned your first love. You've left your first love. Ephesus was a large city that had a lot going for it. They had endured hardship and suffering, the Christians there. They were a small group of faithful Christians, Jewish Christians at that time, in the midst of a very um, pagan and immoral city with all kinds of idol worship and everything, and they had abandoned their first love. They um, had forgotten what the church was about. So Paul, John says, I keep saying Paul, don't give up. Hang in there because Jesus loves you and will care for you always. The word to the church of Ephesus still speaks to us today. Don't give up. Hang in there. Bring your lower storing wanderings back to the God who loves you and cares for you who will bring all things under his feet at the end of time. Justice will eventually be done. Keep hanging in there. Believe in Jesus and don't forget to follow him in all that you say and do. I think that's a good way to end our time in the story, remembering God's upper story, trying to get us back from our lower story wanderings. I hope this year has been a blessing for you. I've loved preaching through the Bible in this way, beginning in Genesis in September, now ending in Revelation. I just pray that God will bless you and keep you. Keep reading the Bible. In fact, keep the story by your bedside and bedstand. Just read through it again. Start in Genesis. Now that you know the end of the story, go back to the beginning of the story and take this summer maybe to read through God's love for you. Let's close in prayer. God, thanks so much for this past year. Thanks for this time together. Thanks for your word that comes to us, that speaks through the ages because it speaks the truth. Keep us close to you and help us not forget. Help us not abandon our first love, your love for us in Jesus, Jesus whom we love. Help us not remember, not not forget not abandon our first love, your love for us in Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, it's been great to be with you. You take care and we'll keep in touch. We'll see what lies next. And I look forward to seeing you again. You take care. Bye-bye.